morning, everyone, and welcome to the Day in the Life series. My name is Keith Schaefer. I'm the product manager for the 3D Experience products here at Inflow Technology. This is Season 1, Episode 2 of the Day in the Life series. Hopefully everyone was able to tune into Episode 1, where Bob McGoy walked us through logging into the system, opening CAD files, checking them in, reserving and unreserving files. Uh, today, we're going to pick up where he left off in Episode 2, but we're going to kind of take a twist on this and we're going to talk about dashboarding on the platform. So we will we'll be working from the web browser side of this and we're going to talk about what a dashboard is, how to use them, and, and kind of give you a good example of where to start with your dashboards as you come into the platform. So most new users to the platform will be presented with a dashboard that looks something like this. It'll probably come up as my first dashboard up here in the title. Uh, it'll have one or two tabs getting started and learning the experience. And we'll have this little hamburger symbol, uh, which will open up the dashboard list. You can see, in my case, I run a lot of different dashboards for a number of different reasons. Selecting between these allows me to pick which dashboard that I'm running off of. Uh, in this case, I'm, I'm looking at my favorites, so I can pull dashboards up into my favorites, uh, and I can and pick which dashboard I'm running off of. You can see some of these have the shared icon next to them, meaning that they're shared by multiple users or they're being used by multiple users. And some of them have a locked icon. Uh, in this case, the locked icon presents that uh, this is a role specific dashboard and I don't have the options to make any changes to it. Uh, it's always gonna be the same and it's basically locked to that role. In this case, the, the admin role. For our example here today, we're going to go ahead and create a new dashboard. So I'm just going to hit the Add Dashboard button here. I'm going to start with an empty dashboard just to make a good example out of this. So um, we're going to call this Season 1, Episode 1. Or I'm sorry, this is Episode 2. If I want to have a description, I can do that. I'm just going to go ahead and create that empty dashboard. And you can see that it becomes the active dashboard from the top of the screen. And I can now come back and, and just close that, that app drawer. So when we look at this, I now have a new tab and the ability to add additional tabs. Uh, the tabs are basically ways of, of allowing me to control different workflows within the system. For example, uh, when I'm working as a CAD user, I generally use a, a tab that I rename to CAD. So it contains all of the tools that I would typically use as a CAD user. So to get the tools onto my CAD uh, tab, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to come up here and we're going to click on the compass. The compass is going to give me a breakdown of all of the roles and you can see I have a lot of roles on the platform. You probably only have uh, maybe three or four roles on your platform. Um, in this case, I'm going to come to my roles. I'm going to close this and you can see all of the apps based off of those roles that I have access to on my system. In addition to that, you can see I have some favorite apps that allow me to, to reuse the ones that I use on a daily basis. In our case, I'm going to look to um, a couple of different apps to have on my CAD toolbar. I like to use uh, an app called just going to scroll down here. It's going to be Product Structure Explorer. So here's Editor. Um, here's the Product Explorer. Now you'll notice that these apps, uh, the apps that I'm looking for are the ones in the, with the little arrow in the corner. These are the widgets. And widgets are specifically designed to be dragged and dropped onto dashboards so that they can be reused. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and drag the Product Explorer over into my dashboard and we'll drop it there. And you can see that this specific app has two different widgets that come along with it. Um, so I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger and I can pull and push and drag these around uh, so that they make a little bit more sense to me. And the other app that I really like to have on my CAD toolbar, uh, because a lot of times with my CAD tools I'm dealing with revisions and lifecycle states. I like to have my collaborative life cycle and I like to put it down on the bottom down here. I'm just going to drag it across and make it a little bit bigger. 
Now you can see I can drag each one of these independently, but one of the nice things about the dashboard is my ability to come back and also say fit. So once I say fit, you can see that now I'm able to just grab those partitions between the different widgets and I can pick and choose the size of them. I also get the, the ability to maximize. So if I'm working in the collaborative life cycle, I can maximize that app or I can restore it to its original form. In our case, this is one of the setups that I like for my CAD. The other setup that I typically have uh, is one that centers around change. Um, and enterprise change, uh, the ability to make changes to these objects is really important. Uh, so I like to have a, an app specific to that workflow. So I'm gonna create the plus, I'm gonna hit the plus button to create a new tab. And I'm just gonna rename this one change. So I'll go ahead and say okay to that. And the widgets that I'm gonna pull in on this one are a little bit different. So I like to use issues. So I'm gonna come down here to issues. And if you're, if you're looking for something that you can't find it, you can always come up here and say, I'm looking for something with issue in the name. And you can see uh, the system will filter on that and will allow me to find everything with issues in it. In this case, we're actually gonna use both of these. I'm gonna pull the issue management widget over in there. And I'm also gonna pull the issue 3D review. So we'll pull that over on the on the side over here. Now, what good would a change uh, tab be without the ability to look at change actions? So I'm just going to filter for CH, gives me change action, and I'm gonna pull that in as well. And so these are the three apps that I typically like to have for my change tab. I'm gonna go ahead and tell it that I can fit these and you can see that the system will shore these up for me uh, and it's already starting to pull data from my system. Now the reason that it's important to have these widgets all lined up and sorted out here is because uh, the workflow that I wor usually use, uh, these widgets will work off of each other. So for example, um, I'm gonna come up into one of these issues and I'm gonna drag and drop the spreader into my 3D issue review. And you can see I start to get a workflow of what's going on inside of this issue, inside of this main assembly, and can now pin against it change actions if I wanted to. So if I was ready to create a change action from this issue, I could go ahead and select it and tell it that I wanted to add a new change action to this specific issue. Again, it kind of goes to the workflow of what's going on. I don't want to get too involved in that right now, Likewise, if I come back to the CAD toolbar or the CAD tab, um, I can go back here and let's just say, for example, I'm looking for anything that Bob has put into the system. And you can see I get a lot of results. Um, and it's very simple for me to say, show me everything that's a root structure. So I'm just using my six W tags to pull that down. And at this point, I can jump in and just drag and drop the item that I believe to be what I'm looking for. In this case, the bottom of that shredder that that he just checked in and you can see I have full access to it. Likewise, again, these widgets are working off of each other. So if I wanted to know a little bit more about the life cycle of the shredder frame, I can quickly drag and drop that down here. And again, it kind of goes to the workflow of how I want to be able to push and pull that data back and forth to really understand all of the ins and outs of it, revisions, life cycles, uh, and everything going on with the data set. Uh, I can easily do that with a nice little setup uh, as long as I get my widgets and my dashboards laid out in a, in a well-organized manner. To round out this example, we're going to take this dashboard. Uh, so this is Season 1, Episode 2. And we're going to share this to the rest of the team. Now we can do this by user. If I type in Jeff, you can see all the Jeffs that come up in my system as users. Uh, we can also do this by group. So if you have a group set up, you can start typing the group name and you can see I can say, maybe I want to send this to the Inflow Informed group and I can share this dashboard over to them. We'll pick up this example uh, in the next video or in the next episode, episode three, uh, where we'll talk about releasing CAD data within the system.